Hi everybody, it's Claudia with Real Progressives and today I would like to talk about Fukushima. Um, we can of course work on a political system, but the problem is we can't vote ourselves a new planet. We just simply can't. And there are so many things going on right now globally that is destined to destroy our planet unless we act incredibly fast. This is not a time to squander and this is not a time to waste time. We need to unite globally to save this planet because right now we are literally at a crossroads where we need to decide whether we will have a livable planet and not just for humans, for more or less all life as we know it other than bacteria and fungi and or we don't. I mean this is what it's coming down to. And yesterday I did some research on Fukushima and I have my notes here so I'm gonna, hi everybody, it may well be too late. Well Kathy you know that's a good point but in the meantime we need to do whatever we can do. And um, so in Fukushima, 40 years ago, the GE employees, GE was um, uh, working on the plant, building the plant, uh, employees resigned because they said 40 years ago that what they were doing wasn't safe with or without building a nuclear power plant by the ocean on a fault line. I mean, you have to let that sink in and it's not the only one. We have thousands around the world. Anyway, Fukushima wasn't safe 40 years ago and it is less safe today. Reactor 2, they just recently found that there is leaking, they thought there was leaking about 73 sieverts, sieverts uh, an hour. Well, come to find out it's not 73, it's 530 per hour a human being exposed to five, will half of them will die, exposed to 10 sieverts, they will definitely die. And it's leaking 530 an hour. And now there is talk that it's actually more than that. So we honestly don't really know. We know it's at least that much that we do know. So the other thing that's going on is our government, and that was still under Obama, upped the allowable radiation levels. And here, here is the thing that will blow your mind, honestly, because it blew my mind when I figured that out last night. Radioactive iodine-131, the allowable uh, amount was three picocuries per liter. And I don't honestly know what Pico Curry's is. It's just the, the unit that it's measured in. So three was the allowable amount. They upped it. And I mean, I want everybody to make a wild guess to how much, but I'm going to take that away from you. Make it in your mind. And the new number is, instead of three, is 10,350. That's the new allowable amount of radiation of iodine-131 in our drinking water. It, they, from 3 to 10,350. Okay. Strontium-90, which causes leukemia. The allowable uh, amount was 8, and they upped that to 7,400. 7,400 instead of 8 is the new allowable amount of strontium-90 in drinking water. Now, if you think it will take a while till the whole Fukushima fallout a waste, a nuclear waste will come over here and da-da-da-da, no. It happened in 2011. By the middle of 2011, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, they already measured radioactive iodine in the drinking water and that was the same year Fukushima happened. So if we think we can just relax, we can't. Also, plutonium 
one millionth of a gram. One millionth of a gram is enough to cause cancer. And I'm sorry, I have to keep looking at my notes here. Will cause cancer. When Fukushima happened, between four and 6,000 pounds, four and 6,000 pounds of plutonium nanoparticle dust was released. So basically, what they did in Chernobyl and Fukushima is many by a magnitude worse than Chernobyl. What they did in Chernobyl, they took basically concrete and encased the entire thing in concrete. That's how they finally contained it. In Fukushima, we can't get close enough to encase it. We just simply can't get close enough. They built a robot to go into reactor two, thinking the, uh, the, the uh, civets, uh, it was only 73 civets an hour coming out. So they built a robot that could have been in there, that could have taken contamination up to a thousand. So it could have been in there for like 14 hours. Well, now they figured out it's 530 civets an hour. So they can't send the robot in for more than an hour and a half and the robot will die. So it's a really dire situation. And unless we globally think of a solution and we globally work together to contain this and shut other nuclear power plants down, there is no surviving this planet. Okay. There just isn't. The other thing we need to do, and we have to grab each one of ourselves by our own nose and say, how wasteful am I? Why do we even need those nuclear power plants? Because Einstein said it's a hell of a way to boil some water. Nuclear energy is a hell of a way to boil some water. And it is because we can't wait an extra 10 minutes to boil something. We need to have it on the gas stove right now, turn it on five minutes, two minutes later, it's done. You know, we need to all see how we can contribute that we don't use so much energy. We really need to go through our life and be really honest. How wasteful are we? How can we change that? What are we doing wrong? Each one of us, it's vitally important to the survival of our planet right now. It really is. And that's just Fukushima. We have geoengineering to contend, uh, contest with, which also needs to be shut down right now because it is devastating, not just to our climate, to our plant life, because they're spraying a lot of aluminum. It comes down in nanoparticles. It binds with the root system of plants and it destroys plant life. It just simply destroys the plants. The trees are dying, the plants, the shrubs, all. It's the reason why Monsanto is developing aluminum resistant seeds because once aluminum is in the soil, it is very hard for plants to grow. Aluminum is not conducive to life. So we have a lot of things to contest with. The first thing is we need to spread the message so people are actually informed and no longer blinded by what is going on. Because as long as we're blind to reality, we cannot fix it. That's all there is to it. As long as we don't look at the problem, we are like an alcoholic who says, no, I'm not, I'm not an alcoholic. I'm not an alcoholic. When clearly we are, we are addicted to comfort and we are addicted to our ways, which we desperately need to change right now. So I hope you look into this material. I hope you make yourself smart. Always investigate for yourself. Never believe what I say. Always investigate for yourself. You'll be hard pressed to find information in the mainstream media. They are of course, staying away from that, like the plague. So, but do a Google search, find out on Fukushima. There is a wonderful scientist, um, Helen, um, Caldecott, and, uh, she gives amazing talks on YouTube. If I find one, I will put it right underneath there. There's a 10 minute talk of hers on Fukushima that will blow your mind. So please do some investigating yourself and stay safe and look at what you can do in your life to make this planet better. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.